Welcome to another exciting video, or Willkommen in einem anderen aufregens video. This part 34 of my game system design series, I will be investigating Napoleonic figure gaming rules, basing history, something I never imagined I would ever do. But I found this topic so complex and malleable as to warrant a detailed analysis of how Napoleonic figure gamers have dealt with basing over the last 50 years. My guess is the first figure gaming was actually Napoleonic, or at least mid-19th century gaming, both due to the Germans and in the late 19th century the English. The English had the, a greater focus on the use of figures, so I expect it's where it all began. Being first has a lot of advantages, which is maximum flexibility, but it also has disadvantages, which means you have nothing to build on. So I expect a lot of ideas were tried. The other issue is we know enough about Napoleonic warfare to be dangerous, but not enough to be certain. The result is the most complex range of basing styles of any in the figure gaming world that I'm aware of. This video uses uh, standard figure sizes um, that you see up here, broken up by um, scale, which is basically 6mm up to 25mm. Now, uh, an infantry figure with an outstretched gun will normally be about 3 centimetres deep for 25mm, 2.5 centimetres for 20mm, 2 centimetres for 15mm, and so on for 10 and 6. Obviously, infantry with the gun pointed up will take up much less depth, but I'm showing the maximum depth to give you an idea if the figure's gun extends beyond the base. For cavalry, the values are double this, and for artillery, in this case a 12-pounder heavy artillery with crew, three times than that of infantry. Obviously, a 4-pounder would be a lot less than this. Going back into the dim reaches of history, the earliest reference I could find to basing was actually in the first edition of the WRG rules, where there is a sentence which states... Most players use a figure base width of half inch for infantry and three quarter inch for cavalry. However, these sides were designed for 20 mil figures and the new 25 mil figures will no longer fit them. These sizes that I'm showing here are based on this statement. Now, of course, WRG modified them to accommodate the new 25 mil figures, which is the reason why they put this comment in. I'm uncertain what the width of bases for artillery figures were, and I'm uncertain what the depths of the bases would have been, but I suspect the infantry bases were square and the cavalry bases only deep enough to fit the figure on them, so it may have been about one inch. As for units, or basing figures together, there is absolutely no mention, that is, there is no concept called a element or base which contains more than one figure in these rules or basing system. The concept of elements did not seem to exist in the old days, and players put their figures together as they saw fit. This actually matches up with my original basing, in my case Confederate airfix figures, on square individual bases, which was a pain to game with. The uh, reason why I based Confederates was that they kind of looked like Austrian troops, and the Union troops kind of looked like Prussians, so my first shot at figure gaming was the Austro-Prussian War. When the WRG set of rules actually came out, it changed the base sizes to metric and slightly increased the sizes of some base to accommodate the new 25mm figures. This shows us the bases with 20mm figures on them. 25mm figures all fit, uh, except for the artillery, which would require a slightly deeper base. WRG suggested you mount the figures together into company or squadron size formations. As the figure scale was 20 to 1, I expect this was an element of between 4 and 6 figures, depending on the size of the company or squadron. However, most players would have kept their figures separate for flexibility, and I do seem to remember the idea of using cigar lids as um, bases that you could put, um, or movement trays, you could put your elements or bases into, so you could move your units around as a single unit. When the TTG sort of rules came out, initially uh, for a competition and then later uh, in actual published form, they used the older 20mm basing scheme, which I've mentioned before. Now, the 20mm, I'm assuming, uh, really refers to airfix figures, and, and that's why that was popular before that time. 
Once again, uh, there were no real concept of elements in these rules, although figures were grouped together to form units. I found the artillery base rather large, considering only one gun was placed on the base. But I do have a copy of the rules, and that's what it says, so I'm not quite sure why that's the case. I seem to notice the basing system in the UK and US developed separately. However, the earliest set of US rules that I could find also used the basing system based on figures rather than elements. This is about the earliest US set of rules I could find, so I have to assume other rules in the US of the same period were similar. The basing does seem rather small for 25mm figures, so I'm assuming the basing sizes are for 15mm figures rather than 25mm figures. I suspect 20mm figures may fit on these bases as well. I'm showing 15mm figures on this basis. In retrospect, I suppose these were designed for Airfix 20mm um, figures because I'm pretty certain that Airfix would have been available in the US during this period. In 1979, WRG came out with its second edition of its rules, and for the very first time, they included the concept of elements. I suspect these were the first set of rules, at least published, that used the concept of elements, where each element consisted of between one and four figures. WRG also provided basing for 6mm, which was the first 6mm basing I have ever seen in any set of rules. When 15mm figures turned into 18mm, they became difficult to fit on these bases. Actually, they became impossible to fit on these bases. Ancients went down the path of increasing the base width to 4cm, but unless the current version of the WIG Napoleonic rules, which you can get at Lulu, has this addition added, I'm not aware of any changes in basing for the uh, light, slightly larger figures for the WIG Napoleonic sets of rules. I may need to purchase a set of the Lulu rules just to see if they've actually added it. WIG started to make greater effort in getting the frontage to match those of real life, although they were certainly not perfect. If all the cavalry was based two per base, then the cavalry, close order infantry and artillery would be about as perfect as you could ever get in terms of historical frontage. The skirmish density was not accurate. A more accurate frontage would be half that provided. But I expect uh, the two figure per base was to make the base look nicer and WIG was very much focused on trying to minimise occurrences of double basing, that is forcing players to have a compact order base and then when they went skirmish replace it with an open order base, which is the reason why I think they went down this two figure path. This diagram shows the 25mm basing. I have not shown the irregular cavalry due to lack of space. The basing has changed a bit per figure uh, compared with the first edition of the WIG, but not really by much. WIG was clearly focused on making all the elements the same width, only the artillery not fitting into this scheme due to an attempt to retain as much historical accuracy as possible. The figures were now mainly used for casualty purposes only. Combat was now element-based, and this was also another interesting revolutionary advance. That is, the concept of making all the elements the same width and basically having combat focused or combat occurring by element rather than by the figures on the element. Now this is uh, Empire 3rd Edition, which uh, did actually include a great deal of modifications compared to 1st Edition. Now I'm not certain just how much basing changes were incorporated. I don't think much. I think most of the game system changes were related to the game turn and the the zones and telescope, telescoping game turns and, and things of that nature rather than the actual basing. Now, Empire 3rd Edition still determined base size based on individual figures, but it was recommended recommending players to base more than one figure together. Cavalry would be placed into squadrons and infantry into companies or some other logical organisational division or structure, saying that the rules did state any basing system could be used, but this would require some level of house rules to be implemented. The rules are still listed 25mm basing first, but the examples were all in 15mm, so I have to assume these rules were probably mainly focused at 15mm players. I have no idea why Austrian cavalry between 1792 and 1805 should have had smaller frontage than any other cavalry. The French in 1815 charged with a frontage of 1 metre per horse, which leaves almost no room on either side. Perhaps the Austrians had very thin horses. Corps Commander, 1st edition, first came in 90, out in 1988. Now, these basing values are for version 4, which came out much later. But my understanding 
is the basing did not change from the first edition. So this probably represents the first examples of elements, that's element basing, from any US rules. If the first edition retained the same basing as the fourth edition, then these rules were the likely origin of the US basing system of 2x2, which could have also come from the American Civil War rules, which the company also published. I, for one, was surprised that these rules, that is, Corps Commander, were actually first published in 1998. I thought they were much later sets of rules. Napoleon Battles, which came out in 1989, was published by Avalon Hill, which did surprise me, as Avalon Hill was more commonly known for its board games. It, use, it is used as a form of base point by many players, and in, in its day was very popular, although I suspect they were not used very much these days, but are still constantly referred to. I suspect that outside the US they did not gain the same level of popularity. But the real reason I think these were so popular was the fact that they were the first set of rules where each individual element represented... Uh, well, it allowed you to fight a much larger battle than any other set of rules prior. I was recently told these set of rules were the most probable source of the 2 by 2 basing scheme used in many later rules in the US, although Corps Commander you predated these rules by one year, so that could be technically the origin. Saying that, the players I'm aware of do not typically use uh, the full Avalon Hill basing system, especially for cavalry. So I'm not certain if this basing was the only the preferred option and other options were available in the rules. I suspect, uh, basically, they were the only option available in the rules. I will need to purchase a copy one day to confirm. The artillery basing was also commonly changed to one and a half inch wide. I'm not sure why, but that's what I was told. It's interesting, I uh, received a comment on one of my other videos which allowed me to update this particular video. So. The advantages of getting feedback, it reduces any errors I make in uh, subsequent videos. So thanks to that player, I certainly do appreciate it. Sharko allows players to use any number of different basing systems. In this case, I'm showing 4 for infantry, 3 for cavalry, 2 for artillery, and an optional skirmish base type. I provided the combination which all uses a standard base width of 1 and a quarter inches, and which is generally used in the examples. But players can also base infantry three wide or two wide and two deep as well. I'm uncertain what the actual recommended basing should be, but I expect the game system is not super focused on specific element widths. Nonetheless, I have to assume the examples probably reflect what the designers prefer. The interesting point here is the skirmish base, which provides a reasonably realistic skirmish density. The skirmish base can also be one inch deep if players wish which would actually make them look a lot nicer and allow you to put more diorama on them. Finally, by 1995, there were at least three well-established basing system. Three centimetres wide with three figures, four centimetres wide with four figures, and two centimetres wide with four figures in two ranks. That's two up front, two at the rear. These three systems are still used today, so I would suggest the basing standards have been set by 1995. WRG Ancients probably set the 4cm wide base standard. Corps Commander or Napoleon's Battles probably set the 2x2 basing standard. And I must admit not knowing the origin of the 3 figure 3 centimeter wide standard basing system, but it must have been from a set of rules printed prior to 1995. Of course, 6mm was to upset the apple car, but for now we have some common level of a basing system of a sort. General de Bagre provides basing values for figures which are rather variable. However, they advise players to base these figures into elements of 6 to 8 infantry per base in two ranks. I've shown a 8 figure infantry base scheme, but 3 figures per rank is also permitted. The 2 rank 4cm wide base with 8 figures in two ranks is a new type of basing system. But this exact system never really caught on until DBN came along, and even then uh, this uh, basing really was very optional. Grand Army is a big base set of rules. Each big base is a 3 inch square, and players can place anything they wish on the base. The players need to keep track of the status of the big base using counters or written records. I've shown an example of 15 mil figures on the big base. I suspect this may work better with 10 or 6 mil figures. Some players I know use 3 cm square bases and reduce the playing area accordingly. This works well with 6 mil figures. I personally would go with 6 cm square bases and would use 6 mil figures. 
which I suspect is an option as well, and what I've generally seen out there as well. This kind of system really shines with 6mm figures, which we'll see in the 6mm abasing system section of this video. I placed it here, here because it was the first occurrence of this type of basing I am aware of. Elan comes from Australia and adopts a reasonably standard WRG-like basing system, except the bases are now 4cm wide instead of 3cm. This is probably what WRG would look, like, would look like if it was updated to accommodate 18mm figures. It's also possible that, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the edited version of the old WRG rules may have well been modified to include this basing system. It'd be quite trivial to do so. I may, as I indicated before, purchase a copy in order to find out, for curiosity's sake. Guard to Core 3rd Edition, which are now free rules available to anyone who wishes to get a copy, uses the basing system from Napoleon's Battle, or at least that's what they claim, although it doesn't really look like it. Um, the interesting point is the correct frontage for cavalry compared with infantry, as well as a separate skirmish half bases. I suspect the half bases are used to avoid double basing, and thus the actual frontages of these base is a double of what you see here. Many set of rules avoid double basing by the use of half bases, expecting the players to ensure the half bases are correctly spaced where they need to go. This works, but I must admit I prefer double basing my figures. It simply looks better on the playing area and gives me a lot of real estate on the base to put nice diorama, that is in terms of my skirmish bases. When you actually stack all this stuff together, you end up with a very nice big base that looks quite historically accurate. Age of Eagles is very much an element-focused set of rules, and the number of figures on a base is not really important. What is important is the historical strength of the base, or that is what it represents. As a result, for artillery, the base width varies based on the number of actual guns in the battery. The infantry could be double-based, that is, two of these bases joined together. But the unit always needs some standard size bases for casualty purposes. What I really like about this basing system was the attempt to get the infantry and cavalry frontages right. Other rules can only achieve this by the use of different scales for cavalry and infantry, or simply ignoring the whole topic. I actually like the system, but still prefer a single standard element width for all my forces, in my case 4cm. As a result, I use strength point markers when using my standard 4cm wide bases. When I receive two hits, I remove a double width base. I also do not base two ranks deep, although I do have a DBN force mix which is a double ranked and can use those figures if I want, but I only have enough for a small force mix, so it's not really suitable. Creating a force mix of 50 elements, you know, compact order infantry, each of which is eight figures, requires a lot of figures. I would prefer to have two force mixes than a single double ranked base force mix. But the massive figures do look very nice, if a little bit cluttered. Napoleon, which really, I mean, you know, when people come out with sets of rules, um, calling them things like Napoleon makes it almost impossible to find on the internet. But anyway, the rules, called Napoleon, published in 2009, are a more recent set of 25mm focus set of rules, which come from, a, which come from the UK and it uses the two-rank system common in the US. I expect there is a suggested 15mm basing system as well, except uh, possibly the infantry base is more likely square. This also represents a new basing system which has not really progressed beyond these rules. 1805 are rules designed for 10mm figures and have gone down the path of small bases. I assume to allow for play on a small playing area. I'm showing 6mm figures in the base. 10mm figures may be a bit tight but I have to assume they are supposed to, they, they probably will fit. I think also the 6mm figures may also fit in two ranks if you so desire. There is certainly enough room. There is a point going down the small base path. It allows you to have a standard game on a smaller playing area. But from experience, the small elements are simply too fiddly. Two centimetre wide bases are too small unless they are deeper than two centimetres, which these are not. Nice idea, but I think most players went down the path of bigger bases, which represent larger formations, which actually achieve the same, achieves the same objective of these sort of rules, and is far easier to play. DBN 2.1, even though they are a rather recent set of rules, actually are based on a very old set of rules, which go back to the 1990s. Thus, the basing system is based on those old basing rules. In this particular case, it uses the DBA basing system. 
which is element-based and with all elements being the same width. The rules are element, pure element-based, so the figure density on each base is not important. The important thing is to understand what the element is supposed to represent. I personally can't fit four cavalry figures on a single base, so I, um, I adopt a reduced density for cavalry, such as three per heavy cavalry, two per light cavalry, and one per skirmish cavalry. It basically does not matter what's on the base, and even the three centimetre wide three figure bases can be used here. There's no reason. As long as everyone uses the same base width and they all know what the bases are. I like these because the bases all use a common width and it's very WRG -ish in that particular part. The good thing is the artillery uses the same width, which is unlike the original WRG rules. As you could quite imagine, there is a plethora of basing schemes out there. To try and deal with this plethora of basing systems, you know, specifically 15 mil, you can actually find lots of charts on the internet, such as this. Shaco provides a similar guideline to this. This shows a three basing or basic basing system, the three centimetre wide, four centimetre wide, and the two centimetre wide double ranked base system. Based on this, the optimum basing system is the four centimetre wide base, Doubling this base allows you to get the two rank effect, assuming you need it, and if you need to take half base casualties, you simply use a counter to indicate one loss, and on the second loss, you remove the entire base. The other most optimal basing scheme is, of course, the two centimeter wide base, two rank deep. You just put two together, and that can duplicate a four centimeter base. The only uh, issue here is the three centimeter wide bases. Um, basically, if your opponent has three centimetre wide bases um, I and you only have four centimetre wide bases or let's say two two centimetre joined together, I would suggest your opponent needs to place their bases on possibly pieces of cardboard which are four centimetres wide. But nonetheless, uh, this gives you an idea of all the basing, uh, what the standard ones are. The most flexible clearly is the two centimetre wide as long as you can actually um, paint that many figures. The one I go for is the four centimetre wide base, um, and I don't really know many people that use the three centimetre wide base. This shows the common cavalry basing system. The four centimetre wide cavalry base seems to be the most universal. I personally have never seen a cavalry element based two rank for 15 mil, so I'm uncertain you know, what rules uh, these normally are used for. I know that the old Avalon Hill rules suggest this, but I've never seen any player actually base their cavalry accordingly. Nonetheless, um, my preference is two cavalry per base on a four centimetre base, because that actually reflects historical density for cavalry. But, you know, nothing wrong with the three as well, as long as you know what you're dealing with. Finally, we see the artillery basing, which can be three centimetre wide or four centimetre wide, obviously to match the infantry. The recommendation is at the bottom and is quite wise. Keep the base width the same for all elements does make life easier on many levels, particularly for modern rules. The one aspect of basing which is a real gap in many sets of rules is how to depict skirmish troops skirmishing. This depends obviously on the scale, and is only an issue if you're using a set of rules where the figure scale is, let's say, under 100 men. Scales above this uh, would probably build skirmishing into the combat system, and the standard basing would be more than adequate for this. However, if playing a set of rules with a figure scale of 100 men per figure or under, I must admit I like the idea of historical accurate skir skirmish frontage elements, as you can see here. If you go back to an old set of rules, like WRG, but using 4 centimetre wide bases, then a skirmish screen could look as follows. One element of four figures would convert into four single-figure skirmish elements. If there was a loss in the front line, the fourth skirmish element would take its place. Currently, you need to deploy two two-figure half bases in the front. And while this is perfectly acceptable and the rule works quite well, it doesn't look as nice as far as I'm concerned. If your bases are nice enough, you could almost achieve the same effect as 6 mil big bases if you go with this low skirmish density. And it also allows you to add diorama to your bases. I often these days get a movement tray which allows me to place my infantry uh, formation into two ranks with the front rank being skirmish and the rear rank having the line infantry. And it almost looks like it's a single big base element. We're now going to move into the Polymos basing system. 
There is a manufacturer of a rather high quality range of six mil figures, which have a set have many sets of rules, which uses a single basing system, which they call the polymos basing system. The system uses either six centimeter wide bases or four centimeter wide bases. This shows the six mil wide bases. There is also a six centimeter square basing system, which can be duplicated by the use of two of these bases butted up together. The basic principle is brilliant. For 6mm figures, anyone, everyone uses the same bases and can play the entire range of rules available from this figure manufacturer, which is a buckers from memory. The 4cm wide bases are probably used to allow players to use their figures for other rules, but there is no reason why players can't simply use their 6mm wide bases and play using 25mm scales. There is an issue, especially with fire rangers, but house rules may be able to resolve those issues to an extent. I agree, not perfect. Personally, I like the idea of a universal 6mm basing system, which is applicable to all 6mm sets of rules. However, it's probably not optimal for rules designed for 15mm or 25mm figures. Personally, I will be basing all my 6mm using the Polymos basing system. For 4cm wide bases, I've got 15mm figures which are perfect for that. This shows the Napoleonic Duchy of Warsaw army pack using the 6cm wide Polymos basing system. This really does not show the effect of mass 6mm figures, but does give you an idea of the basing recommendation by the manufacturers of these figures. This example shows the 4cm wide basing using 6mm figures. This is almost certainly the most universal basing system possible, but personally, if I was going to use 4cm wide bases, I'd stay with 15mm. I still think 6mm on 6cm six, six wide bases is the true sweet spot for 6mm from a pure looks point of view. And let's be honest, one big reason why you get into Napoleonic figure gaming is the looks. From a rules point of view, the logical gamer would always use the 4cm wide bases for their 6mm figures. The topic of basing is a premier one, and as a result, I've created more than my fair share of videos on the topic. The key videos are listed here if you're interested. You know, this brings back um, some uh, a comment that I remember from my time in Japan. I worked in Japan for many years, and I heard for the first time a uh, term called otaku, uh, which I think loosely uh, referred to as living or something of that nature. Basically, a super nerd where someone gets involved in some real, you know, um, vertical interest and stays in a darkened room and gets fascinated with it. I sometimes worry that I'm becoming a little bit too obsessed with Napoleonic basing. But anyway, that's it. Before I end this video, some eye candy is in order. I found these images on the internet and I must admit the figures are very nice. Here we see some Napoleonic Austrian Jager. I'm uncertain what basing these use, but they do look nice. I suspect this is uh, double based and this is maybe the um, open order or skirmish mode. The same figures, but uh, in length. I'm pretty certain now that these are double width skirmish bases. Here we see some Grenz Infantry uh, Regiment. These use the four figure two rank basing system. Grenz are light infantry, but this is clearly their compact order. One thing I like about taking photographs of figures is having sufficient backdrop. I particularly like these photos because you've got buildings and stuff like that in the rear, which really give it a nice realistic uh, feel. I do like the buildings, I must admit. Here we see uh, skirmishers from a different Grenz Infantry Regiment. Clearly these figures must be double based, this being the skirmish base. I really do like the idea of having double-based skirmish bases and compact formation bases. I just really do think it looks good if you're playing the scale. I must admit, most of my games really don't need skirmish troops because I typically play a fairly high level of scale. But nonetheless, if I go down this particular scale, um, this does look very nice indeed. You know, creating this video uh, and talking about 20mm figures, um, it reminded me of Airfix figures. And for those interested in what they look like, uh, this is a packet of Airfix Napoleonic French Imperial Guard. Uh, they're 176 scale, which I think from memory are 20 mil figures. As you can see here, with modern paints, you can actually do a very good job painting these Airfix plastic figures, and they look good. 
I only wish uh, I did not throw all my figures away. I must have had hundreds of figures from all sorts of periods back in the old days. Anyway, the, um, it's the old classic tale. Whenever you uh, throw things away, you always regret it. And uh, if you decide to keep stuff, you wonder why the hell you, do, you, uh, you kept it. And so we come to the end of my video, This, in this case, part 34 of my video series on game design theory. In this case, a historical trip down memory lane when it comes to Napoleonic rules basing systems. Something I'm sure you're all finding rivetingly exciting. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hilde, Heimatlin zu kämpfen.